to Our Lady of Lewis Parish in Massapequa Park, New York. I'm Monsignor Jim Lasati, and we're celebrating together the 12th Sunday at Ordinary Time. Let's pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. With and let's take a moment at the beginning of Mass to think about our lives and to confess our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary and Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we pray. Let us pray that we may grow in a true love of God. Father, guide and protect your people. Grant us an unfailing respect for your name and keep us always one in your love. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, Who shut within doors the sea when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling bands, when I set limits for it and fastened the bar of its door? And I said, Thus far shall you come, but no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stilled. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. They who sell the sea in ships, trading on the deep waters. These are the works of the Lord and his wonders in the abyss. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. His command raised up a storm wind, which tossed its waves on high. They mounted up to heaven, they sang to the depths. Their hearts they melted away in their plight. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. They cried to the Lord in their distress, from their straits he rescued them. He hushed the storm to a gentle breeze, and the billows of the sea were stilled. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. They 
rejoiced that they were calmed, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his kindness, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his kindness and his wondrous deeds to the children of man. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impels us once we have come to the conviction that one died for all. Therefore, all have died. He indeed died for all so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh, yet we now know him so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It has risen in our midst. God has visited his people. Alleluia. Alleluia. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, as evening drew in, Jesus said to his disciples, let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with them. A violent squall came up and waves were breaking over the boat so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him up and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up rebuked the wind and said to the sea, be quiet, be still. The wind ceased and there was great calm. And then he asked them, why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, who then is this whom even the wind and the sea obey? And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Thanks be, for being with us for this 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time. We started with a reading from the book of Job, and everyone knows the Job story. Everything that can go wrong does go wrong. And there are times in Job's life where he wants to give up faith and hope. He just doesn't know where it's gonna end. He thinks he's gonna be overwhelmed by the vicissitudes of his life. And the answer to that comes, I think, in this key line. Thus far shall you come, but no further. That's God assuring Job something that you've heard in cliche form many times before. How many times have people said to you, Not, God never gives you anything more than you can handle. But when you're sinking, when you're going through the tough times, when life seems overwhelming, that spiritual cliche doesn't seem to make it, does it? God never gives you more than you can handle. And that's what God is telling Job in this passage. I'm telling you, it may seem overwhelming. You may seem to be paralyzed. You feel you can't take the next step. I'm telling you, I'm not going to let you fall. I'm promising you, I'm going to save you. I'm telling you, when you can't take that next step, I'll carry you so that you can move forward. But I'm not going to let you perish. That's the promise that was made to Job, and it's the promise that continues to be made to you and me by our God, who says, no matter what, 
no matter how bad it may seem, no matter how overwhelming the problems you and I face are, I'm telling you, I love you, and part of love is I will never let you perish. And so that so-called cliche, God never gives us more than we can handle, is actually something God did promise. I'm telling you, there'll be a certain limit, and then I'm not letting you sink. I'm going to hold you, uphold you, because I love you that much. Let's go to the second reading, okay? St. Paul to the Corinthians. This is really kind of interesting because he's saying to us, look, Jesus loved you so much. He loved me so much that he died for us. He gave his life for us. So in some ways, we're free of the worry. He died for us, so death is conquered. Eternal life is promised. We're probably all, or most of us anyway, going to heaven. So when he makes that promise, you say to yourself, well, then time to have a party, time to enjoy myself. But just the opposite is true. If you and I have been given by him this opportunity to realize that the burden of sin is removed, that eternal death is gone because he died for us, isn't the natural response when someone does something really loving and good and generous for you and I to share that generosity in turn? You see, the, the proper response to Jesus' death for you and me is not to say, hey, it's all my time now. It's all for me. It's all good. I can do whatever I want. I'm going to live just for me. Just the opposite. Because he and his generosity is willing to die personally for you and me. It's a mandate then that you and I would say, because I've been so blessed, I'm obligated to bless others in a similar way. How do we do it? One guy in my parish not too long ago donated the kidney out of the blue to a stranger. I said, well, how can you do that? Why would you do that? And he said, well, I had two. And he had none. And he would die. And he has a family. And I have a family and I know what that means. So the right thing to do when I've been blessed is to share my blessings with others. Now, you and I may never be called on to give a kidney. Maybe we just write a check for somebody. But his point of view was precisely the, the response we're supposed to have when we recognize Jesus' generous gift to us. We, in turn, must be generous to others. Um, you may have seen, if you're a film buff like I am, the wonderful Steven Spielberg movie, Saving Private Ryan. And there's that great scene where Matt Damon, who plays Private Ryan, is at the cemetery, the National Cemetery in Washington, and he's at the grave of one of the many soldiers who died for him, to save him, during World War II. And he's crying because he wonders, did I do enough to make my life worthy of their sacrifice? Well, in many, many ways, just as Private Ryan was wondering about, did he do enough in light of the generosity of those soldiers, we've got to, in the midst of prayer, say, God's given his life for me, he laid down his life for me out of generosity and love. What am I doing with my life? And am I living it for others? And if I'm not, what a great opportunity to stop and say, how much of my life is me, myself, and I? And how much of my life I can say is, yes, I recognize gener Jesus' generous gift. And I, in turn, try to live a life of generosity too. I'll give you an example from my own personal life. Today, I'll visit three people who are pretty critically ill, probably going home to God pretty soon. You would think after 40 years of priesthood that we consider it part of our job, that we enjoy doing this, to go to visit the sick. I never want to go visit the sick. And you know why? I think probably because it's a reminder of our own mortality. You know, I spent a wonderful uh, time this morning with this great woman, Madeline, and she knows her time is limited. And I'll go visit a couple of people this afternoon. They know their time is limited. They're in hospice in a couple of cases. But when I go, I'm in many ways not just there for them, I'm also admitting that I know that life is coming to an end for all of us, and it's frightening, and it's overwhelming. I always go in not wanting to be there. Every single time when I can get past my own selfishness, I walk out of there like I did this morning with Madeline, feeling like a million bucks. Why? Because first of all, I overcame my desire not to be there. I overcame my fear, my anxiety, and I realized that I'm not here just for me. And part of our job as a priest, but not just for priests, for everybody, is to live our life for others in thanksgiving for the sacrifice that Jesus made for you and for me. How about yourself? How much of your life, when you look at your life, is being lived for you and you alone? And how much of it is being lived in a shared way? I'll, I'll do for myself. I want to enjoy myself. But I won't forget that in light of his sacrifice for me, I am obligated, mandated, to try to live my life for others as well. That's not just a priest's job. It's all of our jobs because we've been so richly blessed by his goodness and generosity. Okay, finally to the gospel. I love that great line from Jesus, right? He wakes up from a nap and he says, uh, do you not yet have faith? Why are you terrified? We're all frightened. 
Who doesn't have fear? Anyone who says, I've never been frightened of anyone or anything, should go to confession. You're a liar. And why do I mention that? Because Jesus is saying, if you really trust that I've got you covered, if you recognize that I laid down my life for you, so deep was the nature of my love for you, what are you worried about? And why are you letting fears overwhelm me? But they do all the time. And I think it's good for us on a Sunday like today, you know, this, this particular celebration, when we hear Jesus saying, stop being terrified, I got this to also be people who recognize that it's all his, and that by surrendering to him and allowing him to protect us, it's all beautifully, wonderfully in his hands. Uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I encouraged you to watch our uh, personally speaking program with Jonathan Rumi, the guy who plays Jesus on The Chosen. But I love that part of the interview where he said, I finally was overwhelmed, couldn't take the next step, and said, Lord, it's all yours. Do with me what you will. And he said, only then did my life start to make sense. Well, that's not just true for a guy who's an unemployed actor at the moment, as he was back then. It's true for you and me. Lord, I can't do anymore. I'm doing the best I can, but I'm overwhelmed. And he says, I'll carry you. I've got your back. I love that story, which I've shared with you before, of Pope John the 23rd, now St. John the 23rd, being overwhelmed by the pontificate and being exhausted emotionally at the nature of the job. And then one night he writes in his journal, Lord, it's your church. I'm going to bed. And that's really what we're all called on to do, to say, Lord, I can't do it alone. And I'm not frightened anymore because I know you're on my side. What are some of the fears? Oh, there's so many of us. Who of us doesn't have a boss? How many of us would like to tell the boss stuff, but we won't because we're afraid of the consequences? By the way, that's not just true for you. It's true for us. You find me a priest who regularly stands up to tell his bishop the truth, and I'll give you a million dollars. Doesn't happen. We go along to get along like everybody else, because you know what? You want to keep the boss happy. And we do that in doing that. We kind of sell our soul. And more importantly, we give in to fear. How many of us have been in discussions with people where we have a point of view, maybe a particularly Catholic point of view, but we don't want people not to like us, you know? I remember one time saying, uh, when I was having a conversation with someone, they said, you're against the right to choose? And I said, no, I think choice is a wonderful thing. I think you choose when you have sex. I also think you choose um, whether or not you want to let that baby within the womb live or not. And of course, that didn't make me a fan on that person. They love the language of illusion. Oh, but you have to be pro-choice, right? You have to be progressive. But what's the consequence of the progressive point of view? What's the consequence of the choice? See, in fear, we sometimes hold back. I don't want to get on people's bad side. And yet, it's only by speaking our truth that we can say at the end of our lives, Lord, you gave me a voice and I used it. Stop being afraid. What are you terrified of? What are you frightened of? He's telling us that time and time again. Maybe you don't get this, but we certainly, the priesthood do, and I'm sure anyone in public life gets it. I just got one yesterday, a, an anonymous letter, someone complaining about something. They saw me on a news program and didn't agree with what I said about uh, the Eucharist and communion. All right, that's a point of view. You have your point of view, I have my point of view. I think mine is correct because I rooted in Jesus, but all right. Anyway, the person like signs, doesn't sign this, this really kind of nasty letter to me. And I thought to myself, I was more irritated by the anonymity than anything else. Like if you have a point of view, have the courage of your convictions to sign the Don letter. I think there's nothing more annoying than getting anonymous letters because it says, I have a strong point of view, but not much backbone, so I won't sign the letter. Come on. Stop being afraid. What are you terrified of? Where's your faith? Have the courage of your convictions. I think we all have fears. We all have anxieties. And the important thing is to face them and to recognize nothing, absolutely nothing, will overwhelm us because he's on our side. Go back to your uh, childhood if you can. I was thinking back to how many times when I was going through Catholic grammar school especially, we saw one or two guys in our class bully and pick on and put people down. There's a guy in my parish, Joe Salamone, he heads up this uh, group called Long Islanders Against Bullying. And he came up with the thing because he was one of those people who was bullied. And many years later, one of the worst bulliers came up to him and said, you know, when we were kids, I was evil to you. And, 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 and he, he apologized. Well, that's a rare thing when it happens. But I'm thinking for all of us guys when we were young who kept quiet, when we saw the bullies bully people, especially they always go after people that are vulnerable. And we didn't say anything. Why? Terrified they might turn their bullying on us. Come on. Jesus is saying, what? are you still terrified? Don't you believe I've got your back? Don't you believe I'm on your side? Don't you believe I'm not going to let anything overwhelm you? Because that's the promise of all these readings. From Job on, he's saying, I got you. Nothing's going to overwhelm you. I promise. Now, will you please, can I please believe that? 
and stop being the doubting Thomas and wondering, gee, I wonder if I step out of line, if I speak my truth, if I have the courage of my convictions, if I ever stop fearing. Well, Jesus is inviting us to take a look. What's your fear? What's mine? And to let it go. He's got it. Okay, we're celebrating this particular 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time on uh, the weekend of Father's Day. And while it's a secular holiday, I'm suggesting to you it's a very religious holiday in so many ways. And we'll start with the number one father I want to talk about, and that's St. Joseph. I love that Pope Francis has been putting so much emphasis on St. Francis, on St. Joseph lately. You didn't have Joseph, who, by the way, always gets short play compared to Jesus and Mary. You wouldn't have Jesus and Mary. Whether it was getting them off to Egypt when Herod was coming to kill all the kids, or getting Mary in her overly pregnant state to Bethlehem to have the baby, Joseph is the guy. He's the father. He's there. He's the one that makes all the difference in this salvation story. And that's not just true for St. Joseph. I'd suggest it's true for you. It's true for all of our fathers. Incomplete, uh, not always the best they could be. They make mistakes along the way. I'm going to do a blessing in a little while. And one of the prayers is going to be for every father who's messed up, that he might have the chance in his life to make it right, and that whatever way in which he messed up might be forgiven. Because there are no perfect fathers, there are no perfect mothers, but the faithfulness of trying. Joseph didn't know what he was dealing with, but he kept on keeping on. And that's what I think fathers do in and out of season. I had a great one. I want to share, as you know, I do pictures of uh, my dad. Um, great guy, he's gone now about 16 years, and he left me with a great legacy, my mother. Well, we talked about that often enough. His dad, when he was just out of the military service, he had been a Marine captain in World War II, fighting in the Pacific Theater, and, uh, and then he came back, and like a lot of people in his family, he became the next generation of New York City police officers, and this is when he was really young, like 26, 27, and then he became a New York City detective, and then went to law school at night, became a lawyer, but I gotta tell you something, this was an amazing man. The courage that he demonstrated, whether it was in the Pacific Theater as a Marine or on the streets of New York as a policeman, was just amazing to me, that he did it without fear because he thought he was doing something noble and good. But more importantly, from my point of view, here he is later in his life, toward the end of his life, my dad, who had died when he was 84. But I mention it because he took the good that he lived in his public life and he brought it home. And he actually lived the same values in and out of his private and personal and professional life. You know, it's interesting, my sisters and I, people tell me all the time about getting spanked or, or getting hit. In my whole life, my father never hit any of us. He didn't need to because he had this moral authority where we took him seriously. We knew he was a man of conviction, we respected his convictions, and really all he had to say when I was getting out of hand was, Jim, that's not pleasing to me. Okay, Dad, this guy was a Marine, I'm not messing with him. This guy was a New York City detective, I'm not messing with him. But more importantly, because I loved and respected who he was. And I think that's true for most of our fathers. Incomplete humans that they may be, they're trying their best. And let's face it, no one has a handbook on how to be a parent. You learn by doing. You learn by tripping and stumbling and falling. But the greatness of most fathers is you don't give up. And you know, uh, people say, well, you know, it's a sad thing when fathers are absent from a child's life. It's more than sad. It's really tragic in so many ways because fathers, no matter how weak they may be, have a great richness to bring to the table. And on this day, we celebrate them. So I'd like to end by giving a blessing. And this blessing is for not just our dads who are alive, but also our fathers who we pray are in heaven. And uh, join me if you can, just by bowing your heads and, and we'll do that blessing now. Lord God, Father of us all, Creator God, I ask you to bless and sanctify all those who have been given the vocation of being parents and specifically being fathers. Give them the patience and the wisdom to do one of the most important jobs they'll ever do in their life and to do it well. May their love for their children and grandchildren be unconditional with no ifs, ands, or buts. May their generosity of giving be endless. May they, by the example of their lives, teach their children and grandchildren values that last, values that matter. Every father tries his best, some less successfully, for any father out there who's ever, he thinks, made a mess of his fatherhood, I ask you, Lord, to give him another chance to recognize the good that he did and maybe to heal those wounds that have not been healed, to make it better. And for those who, Lord, have passed from this life to the next, please give them the happiness of heaven. And may they have, every father, living and dead, the knowledge that they did the best they could and that their vocation, their effort, was deeply, wonderfully appreciated by you. 
I ask Almighty God to bless and sanctify all our dads, living and deceased, through the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed and happy Father's Day to all. As a people of faith, let's join together in saying, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, with confidence in the goodness of God, let's offer our prayers of petition. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church throughout the world may be united in prayer for the ongoing conversion of those who still do not know Christ. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. that those who preach and teach the word of God in our world may boldly proclaim the promise of salvation. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Prayer. that lawmakers may work to reflect care and compassion for the poor and vulnerable in our society. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Prayer. that those in our parish and family members who are ill may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, especially Fred Maffeo, Shirley Zafanti, Mildred Bolando, Daniel Macia, Anne-Marie Spizzeri, Alvaro Reyes, Margaret Lutz, James Long, Patrick O'Neill, Charles Barhold, Joanne Ayolo. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Helen Kowalczyk and Joseph Katugno. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intention of this Mass. Anthony Vanis, William Pasek, Kenneth J. Ruggiero, and Doug and Linda Cormack on the occasion of 57 years married today. We remember them at this Eucharist and we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I'll add a few intentions, as you know I do. You may want to be seated. For the sick, let me pray for uh, Margaret Lasanti, a cousin who's having surgery, Doug and Mary Ahoto, Barbara Turley, baby Emily Quart, gaining weight. This premium is slowly growing wonderfully well. Barbara Truglio, Dorothy DeLisa, uh, Mary Littress, Veronica Tucker, Thomas Lauer. I want to pray for everyone who's addicted in any shape or form for their freedom from addiction. I want to pray for Kevin Shields and Michael Cataldi and George Gill and Michael Cardone, for Charlene Eisencraft and Noah Torelli, for Don and Jean Azevedo, Lori Lishan, Georgie Ritter, Al Clemente, Gary Hudson, Jean Lusich Dwyer, Michael Campagna, Laura and Elizabeth Steele, Anthony Posterino, Dennis Sweeney. I pray for Amelia Alaka, for Rita Pizzi, for Marilyn Segulo. I pray for my friend Vern. I pray too for Steve Gagliardi. For Kevin Byan, for Byron DeMillo, I pray for John Rogers and Judy Crum. Let me pray for Richard Ferrara. I want to pray too for Russell Castro Giovanni. I want to pray for Tom Crimmins. He's healing well from his heart surgery. Aunt Josephine Rotundo. I want to pray for Henry Grayson. Remember that baby we prayed for all through the pregnancy? Baby had uh, surgery uh, this past week, and thank God the tumor in there turned out to be benign. Thank God for that little Henry. Uh, for John and Roseanne, Simone, for Barbara Simone, for my friend Madeline, who I visited this morning, Dawn Spitelli, I pray for Anthony Scotto and Jim Harmon, Judge Tony Falanga, Heidi Ignoski, Van Tutwiler, uh, my mom Cecilia, Jose Cruz, Leanne Lasanti, for Vita D'Amico, Ron Citrano, uh, Jim Barr, Anthony Kremi, Howie Pomerantz, Nancy Lang, 
Jack Carroll, Joan Donovan, Dean and Mirka McDonald, Marilyn Arbogast, Nancy Palumbo, Pat McTaggart. Let me pray for Bob Cochis, for Melissa Bergman, for Ann Mindus, Nick Castellano, Matthew Edward Lewinsky, Jorge Clemente, Anthony Ponte, Joseph Sardone, Emma Nicole, and uh, I pray as well for uh, Marion Barone. I want to pray too for Millie Bolando, for Marie Tenay, for Marlene Keenan, Bella Glauda, Bill Franca, Dennis M. Dowd, for Jennifer Murphy, for Diane Pimonte, for Dennis Donovan, for Father Kevin Thompson, for Father Frank Nelson. Um, I think that's pretty much everyone I want to pray for, except I also want to remember all the public servants we always pray for, our police, our firefighters, our EMTs, our nurses, our doctors, our teachers, especially remembering Thomas Scanio and Connell Lasanti, two of my favorite New York City uh, Police Department folks, and to pray for those who have died. Uh, so hang in there. Sophia Maglione, Nicholas Delario, Pauline Agamain. I pray for Bill Kelly, Catherine and William Donovan, Billy and Michael Sarasoli, Richard Rosmarin, Lorraine and Ray Campbell, Nicholas and Sally Cordero, Corinne Locke. We're going to celebrate her life next week. Uh, I pray for John and Maureen and Ann Raber, for Mary and Ed Raber, Arlene Wolfarth, Chuck DeHart. Pray for uh, Joseph Monopoly, for John Slade, for John Al and Alma Kappa, Fel Morali, Michael Manzella, John Neeson, Father Jim Frazier, Kenny Bolando, Christina Formato. Pray for Caroline Dodaro, Cynthia Prague, Gaetano, Sal, and Angelo Emilo, Anthony Preziosi, Kevin Brown, Pauline Romano, and Ed and June Janovitz, Mary and Charlie Nobile, Linda Nobile O'Brien, Sam and Rose Pecora, Irene Romano, Marjorie Geary, Anne Marie Tenay, Billy Taylor, Monica Kerrison. I pray for Regina Robinson and Robbie Purick, for uh, Jimmy Soldo, Joan and John Donnelly, Richard Jackal, Henry Meyer, Colin and Tommy Ryan, Barry Champney, Eleanor Mazzi, Monsignor Jack Alessandro, Brian Hussey, his wonderful daughter Suzanne Scanio, Mary Rose and John Brosnan, Leon Sherman Jr., Ronald Chapiopo, Kate Kelly, Connie and Sal Cusimano, Norbert Bobby Gomez down in Australia. They want us to pray for him too, gladly. Ted Scorcia, Monsignor Tom Spadaro, Jerry Monk, Vincent Castoria Jr., Thomas O'Shea, Dave Robin, Matthew Toriello, Marie Austin, Vita Palmieri, Emily LaFaso, Kathleen Smith, George Floyd, John Arturi, Raymond Kennedy, Connor and Will Robles, Mary Ann Hayes, Tommy Valva, Pat Cronin, Dominic Rosado. I pray for Luigi Conti, Tracy Wachowski, Dale Louise Oden, Joe and Marion Bacigalupo, Elmer Schantz, Pat Sistar, Alex Haliasos, Marvin Klein, Peggy Barr, Jerry and Edward Casal, John McMacken, Judge Don Belfi, Raymond Hussey, Nicholas Losanti, Tino DiBello, Joe and John Largan, Father Joe Lukaszewski, Father Ken Marks, Ed Almer, Paul Stashut, Father Tim Hurton, Marilyn Salonia. I pray for Gary and Mike Scorcia, Anna Malandro, Nick Martone, Constance Polio, Jerry and Michael Pangalo, Captain Tim Murray, Dottie Lauer, Norma Calabrese, Bob Perez, John Glauda, Joseph Lovett, Marie Casavecchi, Carol Lindeval, Scotty and Nina Passarelli, Bob and Pat Caliban, Scott Pollock, Ronnie Bedix, Joe and Peggy Bauman, Tom Sully O'Sullivan, uh, Peter Gannon, Margaret and Katie O'Connor, Tommy Engelhart, pray for Victor and Lillian, Bob and Marge, Tom and Helen, Barlow and Ethel, Edward Riker, Danny Carlson, Frank DiGiorgio, Luke Johnson, Marie Baranis, Evelyn Lilicki, Frank Kilgannon, P.J. O'Rourke, Robert and Joan Cook, and Anna Gomes, Paul Struzzieri, uh, Anna and Peter Canal. I pray for Leonardo Playa, Donato Forlenza, Aniello Ferrara, Sister Marjorie McHugh, Marie Hoyecki, John Bolando Sr., uh, Michael Formato Jr., Marion Harrington, Tommy Engelhart, Luigi Morali, for uh, Marie, oh, Marie Gail Penny, that little baby that I just... I just celebrated her mass. Anastasio Sacos, the detective who died in New York. Michael A. Diorio. I pray for Louise McNeil, Lena Lasanti. I pray for Captain John Robert Minatoli, for Mary Yuli, Lena Lasanti, Genevieve Minatoli, also known as Jean Minatoli, Virginia Dennert. I pray as well for Florence Vago, Joseph DiMartino, and uh, let me finally pray for uh, Adina Placido. I just got that message, the sister-in-law of Kathy, and I just got ma mail today, so if you'll bear with me, please pray for my parents, John and Susan Layler, and remember Marilyn 
Riesenberger uh, as well, and also among the sick, please keep in mind Thomas Stephenson. So we pray for all these intentions and all your private intentions in mind, and let's give them all over to the Mother of God as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, and human hands have made it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Lord, receive our offering, and may this sacrifice of praise purify us in mind and heart and soul and make us always eager to serve you by serving others. And we ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise. You never cease to call us to a new and more abundant life. God of love and mercy, you're always ready to forgive. We know we are sinners, and yet you invite us to trust in your mercy. Time and time again, we broke your covenant, but you never abandoned us. Instead, through your Son, you bind yourself even more closely to the human family by a bond that can never be broken. And so, in wonder and with gratitude, we join our voices with the choirs of heaven to proclaim the power of your love and to sing of our salvation in Christ. Father, from the beginning of time, you have always done what is good for us so that we might be holy as you are holy. Look with kindness on your people gathered here today before you and send forth the power of your spirit so that these gifts of bread and wine may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have become your sons and your daughters. When we were lost and could not find our way to you, you loved us more than ever. Jesus, your son, innocent and without sin, gave himself into our hands and was nailed to a cross. And yet before he stretched out his arms between heaven and earth in an everlasting sign of your loving covenant, he desired to celebrate the Paschal feast in the company of his friends and disciples. So while they were at supper, Jesus took bread. He blessed the bread and broke it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness, gave the chalice to his disciples and friends. And he said, take this, all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We do all of this in memory of Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our lasting peace. We celebrate his death and his resurrection, and we look forward to the coming of that day when he will return to give us all the fullness of joy. Therefore, we offer you, God, ever faithful and true, this sacrifice which restores us to your friendship. Father, look with love on those you have called to share in the one sacrifice of Christ, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, make us all into one body and heal us of every division. Keep us always in communion of mind and heart with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until at last we stand in your presence to share in the lives of the saints in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her devoted spouse, and in the company too, of our dearly departed brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, all the people we have loved and lost, let's pause especially to remember them, and in particular, all of our dads who have gone from this life to their heavenly reward. And then, freed from every shadow of death, we shall take our place in the new creation, and we shall give you thanks with and through Jesus Christ, who is our risen and our loving Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. going to say now the Lord's Prayer as we always do the Our Father, why don't we make the intention of this prayer, that whatever fear keeps us from being all we can be might be purged, that we'll give it over to God and trust that he means it when he says, I'm not giving you anything more to handle than you can handle because you've got me on your side. Do you believe that? Do you trust in him? If you do, let's give him our fears and know that he carries us and we can't even carry ourselves. In that hope we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and in body. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ Bring us all to share in everlasting life. Amen. Let's pray together now our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just a, a few announcements. Uh, first, the progress is coming along in terms of the rebuilding of the front of our church. And our construction folks say that in the next couple of weeks, we should at least have steps in so that we can uh, go through the front door. It won't be looking all perfect and nice as it eventually will, but at least we have entrance into the church. We won't, won't be coming in side doors too much later. So to all my parishioners who live locally, thank you for your patience and keep the patience coming. Uh, none of us like the long way around, but the church is going to look beautiful when it's done. And to my many friends around the world, around the country, who've been so wonderfully generous in terms of their kindness to us, I can't thank you enough, um, in particular just the mail today. I want to say thanks to Bill and Pat Sullivan uh, in Las Vegas for your kindness and generosity to us, not only in supporting the church, but also keeping us on the air and your generosity. And so many others who have been so kind to us, and, and thank you for that. And uh, to anyone who's sitting out there and has said, you know, during the pandemic, I've loved being part of Our Lady of Lourdes. Please continue to be part of our, our fa extended parish family. We're not going off the air. We're going to keep on keeping on because we have created this family of friends, thousands of friends around the country and around the world, and we want to keep it, keep it going. So if you've gone back to your local parish church, that's wonderful. So listen to their homily and then tune in for some good stuff here. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. But uh, it's just great to have you as part of our family as well. And I thank endlessly Father Andy and Father Kevin for their goodness in day in and day out doing this for the past year and uh, making it happen so that people don't have to be without their Mass. Uh, what else? I wanted to mention, too, as I always do, um, uh, we welcome any and all generosity. Uh, I want to mention to my parishioners who are local, the church is open. Come on back, especially because I know most of you have the vaccination now, so there's no reason not to come. We were just told this week by the diocese, we don't have to wear masks in the church. All the tape between pews is gone. We don't have to do social distancing. We're, we're living in a much safer environment. So uh, be brave. Uh, have no fear. Come back and share Mass with us if you can. And if you can't, for any reason, uh, just keep on keeping on with us online here. We love having you as part of this Mass. You know that every week I encourage people to watch Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti on YouTube. This week, Janice Dean is my guest. She's the uh, meteorologist at Fox News Channel. But more importantly, she's written a book uh, that's really worth reading. She kind of is very brave in that she's not just telling us the weather, but when she sees her wrong, she tells us what it is. And she lost her mother-in-law mother, mother -in -law and father-in-law to COVID because they were in nursing homes where they shouldn't have been, exposed by the uh, foolishness of our governor. And she takes them on, which I admire a lot, you know, uh, to, to say, Governor Cuomo, you're all wrong, and here's where you're wrong, and I'm going to fight you. And she does that. So Janice Steen, great lady, is our guest this week. And next week, I am sure you probably haven't heard of uh, Michael Wood. Who's Michael Wood? He ran for Congress recently from Texas. But 
i grew up with the book by president john kennedy, profiles in courage, and i think of michael wood as one of those profiles in courage. he stands against the tide and stands for what he believes in, in season and out of season and he may not win the election, he didn't win this year but he he's exactly the kind of person we need in public life who tells his truth and isn't afraid to speak that truth. remember we talked about put aside your fears Michael Wood is one of those people. He's our guest next week, congressional candidate, a businessman from Texas, a, a veteran of Afghanistan and Iraq, a great man, wonderful man, a father, I think, of three or four daughters and a beautiful wife. So Michael Wood next week. Anyway, personally speaking with Monsignor Jim Asante on YouTube, don't miss it, please, and continue to be part of our family. We welcome you and we thank you for praying with us. Let's have a closing prayer now. Lord, you give us the body and blood of your Son, to renew your life within us. In your divine mercy, please assure our redemption and bring us to share, all of us, in eternal life and to celebrate continuously this Eucharist, God's love made real. And we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Not finished announcements. So glad you asked me. You know, we've been served for the past three years wonderfully by Elizabeth Wood. She's been our musical director. She's moved on. Great lady, we wish her all the success in the world. We're so blessed, though, to have a team now, co-directors. Melissa Visconti has been playing the organ for years now. She's uh, going to be our co-director of music. And Matt Balin is here. Matt's a great guy, beautiful voice. You heard it just now. So Matt and Melissa are going to work together to give us the best musical program on Long Island. So Matt Bayer, uh, Melissa Visconti, thank you for saying yes to being our new co-directors of music at Our Lady of Lourdes. And uh, please tune in and listen to them often, often and well. Um, and please say a prayer while you're doing that. For uh, Matt is fine. He's not pregnant. But Melissa <laughs> is very pregnant. And she's due, like, literally any minute now to have her second child. So... Uh, aside from taking on this job, she's also got a wonderful child about to be born and pray for her safe delivery and her happiness with her family. My friends, the Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you and your families in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Never shall be broken for